First, let's start with basics. Well, by now you're familiar with the option to click on inspect. So if I simply do a right click and click on inspect, you will see this console appearing right here. And this way I can narrow down the CSS selector of the element that I want to get that CSS selector for. So for example, there is this post button and I could simply use this option to narrow down certain elements. And then as you can see, the console on the right is moving and it's highlighting the element, um, the CSS selector for that specific element. So let me narrow it down for this button. By clicking on it, you take that in focus. So we, have, we see here several CSS selectors that are addressing this button. If I go up, you see there are other elements being addressed on the left and the one that's highlighted is addressing this button. All right. So the first basic concept to understand is how are these CSS selectors structured? And I will start with, um, with this purple, well, let's call it identifier, this button, sometimes it's div and sometimes it's span. This is tag. So a tag is that sort of identifier of uh, the element. Um, that is usually this, or this is always this very first uh, word inside the selector that is marked here in purple. So it's very often div, as you can see, it's div here, it's div here, it's div on very many occasions. Sometimes it's button, sometimes it's span. And if we expand here, let's see what's inside. There is another button. Here, there are more span elements. And sometimes it's also A, so just one letter, A. And A typically stands for a link. Um, so yeah. Okay, so that's a tag. And the next concept to understand is that every tag, as you can see, has some um, some additions or additional characteristics, so to speak, they're usually marked here in brown. Those are attributes. So we have tag and we have attributes. This is how the CSS selector structure uh, is structured. Now, every attribute has a value inside. So this tag, which is button, has two attributes, ID and class. And each attribute has its own value. Here it's ember588. And for class, it's this long text, share actions primary, and so on. That's the value inside the attribute class. Let's take another example. Let's say, what about this anyone button? So this is this has the tag button, an attribute class, also area label. And type. So this tag has three attributes with three values inside. So let's get back to our post button. I will get in the next videos, I will get to the hierarchy in the next video, because as you can see, there is a certain hierarchy that you can observe. So it kind of starts here, then it goes down, and yet it goes down again. Uh, and there is also hierarchy above it. So for now, I'm not going to dig deeper into that aspect of CSS selectors. For now, I'm just, I just want to focus on the CSS selector itself. So in other words, the structure of a CSS selector is tag, attribute, attribute, more attributes. Sometimes there is no attribute, there are no attributes. Sometimes there is only one attribute or just two as in this case, or three, as we saw for the, for the button, anyone. Okay. So if I build now a, um, a kind of generic structure for a CSS selector, it would look like this. You would start with the tag. You would then use, um, square brackets for the attributes and you would take the attribute equal 
and then set single quotes for the value inside. Pay attention, by the way, to these single quotes. So for example, for this notepad, uh, you can see there are some formatting options. For example, in my case, I have here smart quote. If I had it on, then my, my single quotes would be converted to a formatted version and that won't work. So make sure to turn that option off. On most mo notepads, you will probably not incur in this problem anyway. Okay, so uh, one tag can have several attributes. So let's say there is attribute one and attribute two. This is just the basic structure of it. So if we, if I now build a custom CSS selector for that button, it would look like this. My tag. This would have the tag button. Then uh, the square um, brackets. And the first attribute that I see there is ID equal single quotes ember 588 close the square brackets and the second attribute there is class that equals to that value I'm just going to copy to this value single quotes and closing the square button so this is this would be my CSS selector for this there are multiple ways to express one and the same CSS selector. I do not have to use all of these attributes. In fact, I could say to address this button, I could simply say button and, no, and nothing more than that. I could also say button with ID, and that would be also a valid CSS selector. Now, another question is, will it be unique enough, but it's valid? Yes, it's valid. Or I can simply only use the second attribute. And those four ways in this situation, four ways to express this CSS selector, one is the whole version with both attributes, one with no attributes, one with just one attribute, and another with just the second attribute are all valid ways of building a CSS selector. So far, these are the basics. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to make sure that you're building a unique selector.